Good morning. My name is Ray Nino, and I'm here with my friend Harry Feezy again yeah. and again and again. So we're we we're always very excited to be together here right. and, and yeah. do, do things. And we have done several programs in the past, and we've done them together. And we really want to go further and deeper into that. We we shared on predestination, time, eternity free will and really all that we were sharing was how it affects our lives yes. you know and and if you begin to see how our lives came together and it's quite an amazing thing if you know harry's background and his life and you know my background in my life to realize that we met together 30 some years ago in sweden, in sweden yeah. you know he's yeah. from scotland and i at that time was from pennsylvania uh, it's it's an amazing thing, but then you begin to start to understand uh, God's predestination and His foreknowledge of where we were and where we would be. But we met there, and then He went back to His church, and I actually ended up coming and moving to North Carolina. The two churches became friends, yes, and we met up again. That's right, and, and that's that's really how God works, you know, he, because there was a joining. You know, when we first met, you could feel something like, okay, what did God, what do you want to do here? What, mm-hmm. is, what is it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we then became closer friends. Uh, and I ended up going to Scotland. Harry came to America. And then the two churches decided to go separate ways. Mm-hmm. It was a choice. You know, we, we the, the free will was there in everyone. And they left and they became... They walked down this path. We walked down that path. And I don't know how long it was. It had to be, I think it was, a, I want to say it was a couple of years. It was a couple of years. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was several years. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I was out. I, I was out on my front yard and I was mowing the lawn. And mm-hmm. my wife came to the door and said, Harry Feezy's on the phone. Mm-hmm. I, I can't tell you what a joy that was. I remember it. Uh, and that, that was such a great joy, you yeah. know. And, and from that point, then those that were going this way then came back this way. Yeah. <clears throat> and we began to, you know, our families intertwine. It was, you know, I mean, our, our, our children became almost like brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and you begin to see God's plan. You, you really... You, you you truly <laughs> begin to see what he, what he's trying to do, you know, and there's so many other people, you know, that I know in my life that I've met, and and they became part of my life for that moment. And you wonder, okay, God, why did we become together for that just yeah. that period of time? Mm-hmm. And there's others, there's friends that Harry and I both have that. Yes. You know, hopefully one of them will be listening to the actual program yeah, well, right here there's, after there's, we get it done. There's and, quite a few from Scotland listening here. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there's several of them. It would be good if you were here, yeah. you know, and it would be a fulfillment again like it was when I got that phone call that said, Harry Feezy's on the call. Uh, that's right. It's just, it's just life is... Uh, you know, in God's plan is a series of choices and it's up to us what choices we make, you know. And we started off this uh, like a series almost, you know, just being able to talk together about different things and sharing about, you know, salvation, sharing about, um, you know, what it really means. And it started off with, you know, that whole term, once saved, always saved, eternal security, you know. And I just want to just go over that just bring that back up again because what it actually says is it's known as once saved always saved and it's the belief that the moment anyone becomes a Christian they will be saved from hell and will not lose salvation. Once a person is truly born of God or regenerated by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit nothing in heaven or earth shall be able to separate them from the love of God and thus nothing can reverse the condition of becoming a Christian. Basically, once they have been saved, always saved. And that just jarred in my heart. It's, it's just not a truth. I started to read more and more in what the Bible says. And I was reading last night <clears throat> in Jeremiah, excuse me, in chapter 5. And in verse 31, 
there was a situation there where Jeremiah was obviously uh, sharing and prophesying with the people there, the rulers and the prophets in the land, what would happen. But they didn't listen. And it says the prophets prophesy falsely. You know, and prophets, there are false prophets and they prophesy falsely. And the priests exercise rule. People take succor from that. They take, you know, a lot from it and they do what they want to do because that's smooth sayings is what they want to hear. And it says the prophets prophesy falsely. The priests exercise rule at their own hands and by means of the prophets. And my people love to have it so. But what will you do when the end comes? And this is, you know, some things that we've been talking about. We right. were talking about earlier in the car that, you know, as you get older and I just shared in the car that I am. Is it me that's younger than you or older than you? No, you are uh, definitely older. Than a than little bit. Just a, just, <laughs> just a touch. Just a little bit. But, a little, only, uh, only a little bit. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. That's it. Uh, but and, but what, I, what, what the whole point of that conversation was is, isn't it amazing? Actually, the older you get. You know, the more fine-tuned things seem to get. You know, it's like a crucible. It just it, it just distills your very actions, your thoughts, your prayers, your purposes. And, you know, you come to a point where some other things, like, well, I'm saved, it's okay, I can go and do what I want. You're, that's not true. We can't just do what we want, you know, because it's not the way it works. And it says, but what will you do when the end comes? Yeah, and then I have this other verse that goes, but it's also in Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And it's Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Just like Harry was reading that in the end, the final outcome. Then... You will call upon me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire of me, require me as a vital necessity, and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And that's really what we're talking about. And when Harry says, as you get older and you get a little more wiser, well, you, begin to, you begin to start seeking God with yeah, your whole heart. whole heart. And he becomes truthfully a vital necessity, necessity. Yeah. it isn't just a nice casual time yeah. it isn't like okay once saved always say we can go do what we want no christ and jesus becomes a vital necessity mm -hmm. daily yeah. we have to go to him daily yeah. he's part of our lives yeah. daily yeah and it's, it's like you know i was thinking that you know the last um even just the last few weeks you know you meet people you meet them in the street you meet them in the store and there's something that just draws you and you start to speak to different people. And this, this has happened a couple of times in, in the last few weeks. And as you get to open up the conversation and they realize that you are a Christian and they are and they come from different states or whatever. The question that came twice was, when were you saved, you know? And in my heart, it was like, well, I'm being saved, but I'm not saved yet. You know, I, I am walking that path. God's doing that work. He's doing that work in my heart. And in Matthew 24, it says, Many false prophets will rise up and deceive and lead many into error. And the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied lawlessness and iniquity, sin. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And it says in the King James, he shall be saved. And the end here refers to the end of the age at Christ's second coming. That is the end where it, it speaks about. Jesus is saying that this salvation, it will occur in the future. And the statement indicates that being saved is a future event that believers have not yet experienced. Everybody wants to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Everybody wants to hear that. But there is a, it's a fight. It's, it's a pushing through, it's a prayer, it's a, you know, a, a real whole yearning in our hearts that we want to be in that final outcome of well done. In and, and you know what, it's like you're saying, the false prophets that are out there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and those that grow cold. And, in, yeah. you know, in Second Thessalonians yeah. 2, you know, three, it says, let no one deceive, deceive or beguile you. And that, that, that's what... 
you know, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. You get a false security here. All of a sudden you got, oh, I'm okay, you know, so I'm doing anything I want to want to do. And the next thing you know, <clears throat> you've grown cold. Yeah. It says, let no one deceive or beguile you in any way, for that day will not come except the apostasy yeah. comes first, unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians has come. That's key. Hey, Huh? That's key. It's those, come. those that have professed to become Christians. As profet, the man of lawlessness is revealed, who is the son of doom and perdition. Mm -hmm. It's you know we're we're in it, people. People were in this. People are falling away. Absolutely. They're growing coal. They've gotten lax. It's you know I, the verse I read earlier. It, it, no longer is Jesus a vital necessity. Mm -hmm. You know they they think they they don't think they need it. Because they can go do all these other things, and because they think they were saved, there's a false security. In it's that. a false security. Absolutely, yeah, and then it says in First Corinthians chapter one verse eighteen, for the story and the message of the cross is sheer absurdity and folly to those who are perishing, and on their way to perdition, but to us who are being saved. This is Paul writing, to us who are being saved, not saved, being saved. It is the manifestation of the power of God. And then Jesus, he's, he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle, without anything, any, anything that would hinder us. And it is when Peter was asked, you know, in Caesarea Philippi, and, and Jesus came and said, who do men say that I am? And he said, after some of the others had said different things, he said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. You are the anointing. You are the word. You are the very person that the word we now know is who created all things. And he says, on this revelation, on this being in your heart, I will build my church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. But he said, I will build my church. And we just, we, we say the term, we go to church, you know, but we are the church. That word church is the ecclesia of God. It is Ek is out and Ecclesia is called. We are the out called from the world. He said on this revelation of you having the anointing of God in your heart and the born again is just the start, you know, of having that, I will build my church on that revelation. And it says in Hebrews chapter 9, even so it is that Christ, having been offered to take upon himself and bear as a burden the sins of many, once and for all, will appear a second time not to carry any burden of sin, nor to deal with sin. He's not coming back to carry that burden. He's already done that. Or not to deal with the sin, but to bring to full salvation. To bring to full salvation those who are eagerly, constantly, and patiently waiting and expecting Him. And that is really, when we get to that place and we do hear, you know, I mean, well done. You know, I mean, Jesus, that is going to be, we say, you know, we, 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 we've really entered into what our heart's desire have been all these years, you know. And, and you know, it's what you're saying is to your heart's desire, because it's, you know, so much when you were, you were younger, you, you thought, oh, yes, I really do want to serve God. I want to go in those ways and all that. But there were so many other things that were constantly pulling you, you mm -hmm. know. And the older you get, the more the more you get to a realization that you really do want to serve God with all your heart. Yeah. You, you don't want to live in all this other because you start realizing, realizing that all this other is truly mm -hmm. meaningless. Yeah. It, it has nothing for you, you know? And so you, you want to go on with God. You want to let him do the work in you. Mm -hmm. you, you want to have the ability. You, you don't want to be pulled away. No. You absolutely, definitely do not want to be pulled away. And there is false prophets, there are false prophets, and there have been. And I just want to read you something because it has swayed a lot of people. And I'm going to read about something that um, was written in the Institutes of Christian Religion. Three, two, one. That's the paragraph that it's in. And it's by Calvin. And it says, by predestination, we mean the eternal decree of God by which he determined with himself whatever he wished to happen with regard to every man. 
This is what he wished to happen. All are not created on equal terms, but some are preordained to eternal life and others to eternal damnation. And accordingly, as each has been created for one or the other of these ends, we say that he has been predestined to life or to death. And even as a young Christian, that was like, you know, that's not true. It just goes totally against the whole heart and the purpose and the plan of God. And I, I remember when I was I was young, I, I, the first book I actually read along with the Bible, and it doesn't really matter about the content, but it was Know What You Believe. And I, 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 that, that stuck with me a long time. I want to know what truth is. You know, and in First Timothy, <clears throat> and we go to chapter, verse 3, it says, For such praying is good and right, and it is pleasing and acceptable to God our Saviour. Who wishes all men to be saved? Not some men, all men to be saved. And increasingly to perceive and recognize and discern and know precisely and correctly the divine truth. He, this was, you know, in the letter to Timothy. And in John chapter 17, verse 20, it's where Jesus is, at, you know, at the end just before... <clears throat> The, the crucifixion, and he's speaking with his friends, his, his and he's saying, I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also, also for all those who will ever believe, all those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message, that they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also may be one in us, and that was his heart's prayer, cry, and desire. And it says in Mark here, and he said to them, Jesus, go into all the world, all the world, and preach and publish openly the good news to every creature of the whole human race. Not just to those that were saved, beans, you know, or those, it's not a selective process. You know, and these two are, contrary to each other they actually contradict each other they're not compatible you know and there's there's obviously some scriptures that a lot of this teaching has been taken from and, I, and as I studied this I started to think okay then what is this because in Romans chapter 8 you can read that 29 to 30 Ephesians 1 5 11 I'll read a little bit of this but it, it speaks about whom God foreknew of whom he was always aware and beloved, he also destined from the beginning for ordaining them to be molded into the image of his son. Ephesians chapter 1, for he foreordained us, destined and planned in love for us to be adopted. Yes, he did. As his own children through Jesus Christ, in accordance with the purpose of his will, because it pleased him and it was his kind intent. In verse 11, in him we also were made God's heritage portion, and we obtained an inheritance, for we have been foreordained, chosen and appointed beforehand. And yet, chosen and appointed beforehand, how can that be? You know, what it is, how can this be? How can God do this? And yet, he's saying all these other things that we've been mentioning. And it is... It's, it so cuts off. What this once saved, always saved, yeah. so cuts off the sovereignty of God. Absolutely. It so so cuts off the power and strength who who He is through Jesus, because it's pretty much saying, <clears throat> okay, this moment then becomes becomes the point, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas God is constantly through His Son Jesus dealing with us uh, in our lives. Mm -hmm. It's a consistency. Yes. We're running a race. Yes. We're like you said, we're running to get to the end. Mm -hmm. It's not over here at the beginning. It's not over yeah. to the end. Yeah. It's got you know it is the end we have to get to. Those that endure to, to the, the end, end will be yeah. saved. And and it become it becomes part of that <clears throat> whole conversation that we are you know, somewhere it says, "I." God says, I, "You know, I'm not man that I should think like you." You know, he, <laughs> he he says he says God who inhabits eternity. He is in eternity. He he does not he <clears throat> he is not second by second in time. You know, we are we came here this morning and we're sharing our hearts, and this is a particular time. You know, but God he doesn't see 
where we were in the car beforehand, where we are now, and what we're having if we have lunch today. You know, he sees that all in the same period of time. It, it is not time at all, it's eternity. And he is looking down through our life from birth to death, and he sees the outcome. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Your mind, your mind, that you're fine, yeah, 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 you're yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, mind yeah. goes, <clears throat> Tilt. excuse me, could you say that one more time? <laughs> Just rewind this if you want to, you know, that's fine. But in time, you know, we are creatures of time. We experience time in a sequential fashion. God is both eternal and outside of time. Therefore, every moment of what we would call time from eternity past to eternity future is equally the present to him. And you can rewind that and say it again, because it is contradictory to how we think and live in time itself. And all I can say is that the present right now is the point at which Time touches eternity. That's the one when you said that earlier to me in the car. I thought I, left, I sat there and thought about that. You know, I just kept thinking. That's such an incredible thought. Yes, you know? it, it touches it because our time from here, birth to death, we we we've got memories, but we see it. We don't see the future. We think we do, but God sees it this way. He's seeing every moment of that time. He knows every choice that we've made and what it takes to get us. So yes, he can say this, this, and this. He can absolutely say this. God, before the foundation of the world, chose you and I and you to be part of his eternal family. And he gave us a free will to choose which way we would travel in life. And, to you know, and the thing that you're talking about, too, there is so, so important. Here's time. Yeah. Now, in the midst of that time, we have a point where we began to acknowledge God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cut off our free will no. from that point on. No. We still have a free will. Yes. You know, so it's not like, oh, oh, I'm okay now. I think I, anything I do is, is fine. No. It's that free will is, you know, this is free will. I, I want to read these verse, the verses here, which they're in Deuteronomy. He, this is the will, because God, God wants you to be free in your yes. will, but yeah. it, the will that you are supposed to have is this. Yeah. He says, if you listen diligently to the voice yes. of the Lord, yes. your God, yes. being watchful to do all his commandments, mm -hmm. which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the yeah. earth, and all these blessings shall come to mm -hmm. you and overtake you. If you heed the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. then it goes on in verse 15. He says, but if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, our, your God, being watchful to do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, then all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And it's a whole list it's, of curses. It's, the, the curses are like, like that. You yeah, know. And the yeah, so to sit there and say, Okay, I've got to this point now, so I'm in. I'm fine. And time is still going, yeah. people. We, yeah. We've not stopped time. No, you know, we, 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 time. We, we, is, we have not, Jesus yeah. has not come, and the end is not here. Yeah. We're still in time, yeah. and we're still making choices. Yeah. And those choices need to be diligently listening to the voice of God and Absolutely. watchful. That, 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 that's the key as well, you know, because, I mean, he gave us that free will to choose. You know, and in our in our life, we choose every decision we make is a choice. Somebody once said to me, "You make decisions, and the decisions will make you." That was a preacher. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one thing I, I heard him say. But Adam and Eve, they had a choice. They did. They had a choice, and they they had a choice. Do they want to be willfully deceived and follow what or follow what God had planned for them? And we're reaping, basically, and but it 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 is part of God's plan that we're going through. It says, so, you know, someone said to me last, actually it was last night. He said, it's, not only did he give them a free will, he gave them a free will to desire. Yes. You know, and, yes. and it's the, that desire things. And yeah. it was up to them of what their choices, choices would be. Choices would be, like the, you read in Deuteronomy 28. You know, right. your, what is your desire? Do you want to listen to the voice of God? You, you know, what, what do you want to do? You know, when Jesus left, he, he said this, um, in John 14, he said, I will not talk with you much more, 
for the prince, the evil genius, the ruler of this world is coming. And he has no claim on me. Jesus said he has no claim on me. Mm. He has nothing in common with me that belongs to him. And he has no power over me. And every single thing that we have that he still has power over, he has that hook in our life that can pull. And we think, you know, we're okay, we're safe. with the, You know, and if that can be pulled at any time. You know, and you don't have your friends and the people that love you enough around you to say, hey, what you're doing is not right. You know, we need to we need to change course here a little bit, you know, and that's what the family of God is, too, you know. But what we're really sharing here is like, you know, the heart of God's expression of his love. You know, he is love and he wants us to be part of what he is. He said, be holy as I am holy, you know, and, and, and it's he doesn't interfere with our choices. But he already knows what the outcome of them will be, and which is why he can say, you know, I foreordained you. He knew us when we were created in the womb. He knew our final outcome according to the gifts he's given us. And this is why and how the outcome of our life can be known beforehand. And I thought about this prophecy. What about prophecy? How does God know what's prophesied to men? Because he's already seen the beginning from the end he's the alpha and the omega he sees it in exactly the same way so i want to say don't be deceived you know go to the word go to the scriptures yourself don't form a thesis or something around just some scriptures or what part of denomination churches you belong to or whatever else like that because we all want to make it we all want doesn't matter who you are baptist methodist protestant church of scotland church of whoever anglican i was brought up anglican to start with <laughs> you know it doesn't matter what we want to do is to get into the absolute fine truth of what god is saying to us and expressing to us in every area and every way yeah, and he says in Timothy, Second Timothy, he says, I charge you yes. in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, mm -hmm. and by and in, you know, the light of his coming, which we're talking about in the end, yes. and his kingdom, he says, Herald and preach, preach the word. word. Yeah. Keep your sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. Stand by, be at hand and ready, whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, convenient yeah. or inconvenient, mm -hmm. whether it's welcomed or unwelcomed. Yeah. You know, I, I had a situation where I have a, I had a friend, a friend's son is very high up in some uh, political areas and in fact, he was actually, when I talked to him, he was actually at a conference in Switzerland that is a, you know, very, very powerful conference. And, you know, uh, we were sharing back and forth and texts. And, you know, the, the thing he said to me, he says, you know, he says, you're a typical Christian. He says, it's in your DNA to say different things. And I said, it is who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I... I it, it may you may not like it. You may not you know desire for me to be somebody different, but it is who I am, and I am going to preach the word. Yes, and I'm going going to stand by it, and I, I'm going to keep my sense of urgency. Yeah. So keep praying, keep searching for truth, you know, and keep coming to that knowledge of Him. Yes, you for know, sure. That's that, that that's really what we're saying. You know, is is it's so important that we. We find that place of humility to say, Lord, I don't know, you know, show me, show me anything, show me where I haven't got a hold of this situation or whatever else, you know, but I want to know you. Yes, it says, it says then in, in closing here, it says in Colossians, let the peace, the okay. soul harmony, because okay. that's what we're talking about, mm -hmm. come, which comes from Christ, act as an umpire. umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all the questions that arise in your mind mm -hmm. in that peace 
fruitful state to which as members of Christ, one body, you are also called to live yeah. and to be thankful, appreciated, giving praise to God always. Amen. Thank you for being Thank here today. You, yeah. We've enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, you can come back any Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8.30 and hear us or go to the website, Word of Faith fellowship.org and hear many of our friends and some of our own past teachings. Yes. Remember, you know, if you got to fight to the end. Amen. You know, he that endures to, to the, the end, end will be, be and shall be, will save. Yes. yes, for sure. Goodbye. Amen. Goodbye.